In 2142, a space probe activates its systems when it finds the wreckage of the Nostromo, the ship from the first Alien movie. It opens a hatch and retrieves an object that appears to be organic before flying away. This object is taken to a space station where a group of scientists cut it open. Half of the object is taken away for research, while the half left behind reveals to have an alien known as Xenomorph inside. Six months later, Rain talks to an employee from the Wayland yutani Corporation, which is in control of this mining colony. Rain explains she's met her work quota and she should be free to go. However the clerk tells her that due to a shortage of workers, she isn't eligible to leave and will be transferred to the mines instead. The system has updated her quota so she'll be released from contract in five years. At that moment Rain notices her adopted brother Andy is being beaten up by some punks. She runs to scare them away and checks on Andy, who is bleeding white because he's an android. Using a special chip, Rain resets Andy to calm him down. Then Rain gets a message from her ex Tyler, who asks her to come over. When the siblings make it to Tyler's ship the Corbelin, Tyler and his family explain that a derelict spaceship is drifting in orbit above the colony. This ship has multiple hypersleep chambers and if they salvage them, they could finally escape the colony. They want Rain to join them because she can bring Andy, who can connect with the ship's computer and release any locks they may encounter. Soon the Corbelin takes off and Tyler's cousin Bjorn shows off a neat fire trick with his lighter. The ship shakes a lot because of the ongoing storm, but once they manage to fly above the clouds, it's smooth sailing. When they finally find the derelict ship, they're surprised to discover it's a whole station. It's also closer to the rings than they thought and they calculate it'll crash in 36 hours. However Tyler tells them not to worry because they should be in and out in 30 minutes. In private, Rain asks Andy if he's sure he wants to continue and Andy says yes because he only has one directive programmed by her dad, to make Rain happy. Once the ship connects to the station, Tyler, Bjorn, and Andy go aboard with a temp scanner. Andy puts his finger inside the first lock and the trio gets inside, although they have to move through a very narrow passage. The station's artificial gravity goes through a purge every few minutes, meaning it's constantly turning on and off. Eventually the group leaves the passage and floats into a room where they find the pods. At that moment the gravity goes off and Bjorn falls, so Andy accesses the station's computer to turn on the power and get gravity under control. Next they check on the pods, but unfortunately they discover they don't have enough fuel to last the nine-year trip to the nearest planet. Tyler rejects the pods for the Corbelin to pick up while he and his partners go looking for more fuel. Bjorn's sister Navarro pilots the Corbelin and picks up the pods with no issues. While Rain takes care of Tyler's sister Kay because she's throwing up, Navarro goes to check on the pods. Once they're alone, Kay admits she's pregnant and asks Rain to keep the secret. In the station, the trio is still searching when suddenly they hear a recording talking about the station. Just like the mines, it belongs to the Wayland yutani Corporation. The station is named Renaissance and is divided into two parts, Romulus and Remus. Paintings on the walls confirm the names come from the famous myth. While they look around, Bjorn gets annoyed by Andy's presence because he hates androids, so he reveals Andy can't come with them when they leave. Tyler is sad to confirm this, explaining the planet they'll go to doesn't allow androids. However Andy says it's fine because what's best for Rain it's what's best for him. Moments later the trio makes it to a deserted yet active lab. Bjorn finds a stun rod and while he plays around with it, he almost falls into a hole in the ground, but Andy grabs him just in time. They also find a damaged android and notice both he and the hole were destroyed by some kind of chemical spill. The boys keep going until they get to the cryo chamber, where the door only opens halfway. The gap is big enough for them to come in and they discover the room is flooded. Tyler and Bjorn attempt to retrieve the fuel from the compartment, only for Bjorn to freeze his fingers in the process. At that moment an alarm goes off and the door closes, leaving them trapped. Andy tries opening the lock but can't because it requires higher clearance. The computer in the neighboring room indicates that the inside the cryo chamber there are frozen aliens known as facehuggers who are starting to awaken. Navarro and Rain have no choice but to board the station to save their friends. Rain finds the destroyed android and wants to check if she can transfer its credentials to Andy. The android wakes up and tries to attack Rain, so Navarro quickly removes its module to shut it down. The girls run to the lab and give the guys the module through a narrow gap on the door. Tyler puts the module inside Andy, who freezes while he reboots. At that moment the facehuggers finish awakening and come out of the pods to hit in the water. A facehugger finds Bjorn and grabs his leg, making him fall. Then the alien jumps on his face, but Bjorn manages to pull it off and throws it against the door. At the same time Tyler dodges a facehugger in the water, but there's another one climbing on Andy who makes a jump and lands on Tyler's face. As it tries to insert its appendage into Tyler's mouth, Bjorn uses the stun rod to make the alien fall off. An unconscious Tyler falls into the water while the facehugger attacks Bjorn, who manages to defend himself. Rain tries to open the door by force but Navarro refuses to help because she's afraid the aliens will escape. Bjorn continues to fight the aliens while a facehugger goes after Tyler, who is now waking up. Thankfully Andy also awakens and grabs the alien by the tail to kill it by throwing it at the lights. Then Andy touches the lock and this time the door does open, so the guys immediately escape. 
Unfortunately a gap is left and the facehuggers work together to open it again. The alien horde starts chasing the humans, who run into another room and lock the door. A facehugger manages to cross through before the door closes and lands on Navarro's face. The others rush to help her but it's too late, the facehugger has its tail around her neck. If they try to remove it by force, it'll kill her. To everyone's shock, Andy starts explaining that the alien is sharing oxygen with Navarro to keep her alive. He sounds more intelligent and less nervous than before. Rain realizes the new module is doing this but Andy stops her from removing it, saying he's been updated. He doesn't know how to remove the facehugger safely, so he proposes to turn on the destroyed android. They connect him to the computer and when he awakes, he introduces himself as science officer Rook. He tells them they should kill Navarro because the facehugger is implanting an alien inside her, so it's too late to save her. It turns out this station is the ship that found the Nostromo's wreck and its entire crew was killed by the Xenomorph, which is now hanging dead from the cables in the hole. It was its acid that caused all the damage too. Rook sealed the station after the alien died, but it was too late. Then Rain has an idea, they should try using the cryonic liquid to freeze the facehugger. Tyler shoots the liquid at the alien and as soon as its tail loosens up, they remove it from Navarro's face. Tyler tries to kill it, however the facehugger escapes through the hole in the ground. Everyone is glad to see Navarro is fine, but Rook warns them there's a 60% chance of an alien being inside her. And he tells the group they shouldn't take Navarro back, so Bjorn hits him with the rod to send him flying. Rain stays to help him and Bjorn uses the chance to run with Navarro. Suddenly Andy hears something and rushes to the corridor to discover Bjorn is sealing the doors. Andy grabs a door to try to keep it open, so Bjorn runs to the next one and closes it quickly. This leaves Andy, Rain, and Tyler trapped in the station. Navarro detaches the Corbelin from the station but before it can go far, she starts feeling sick. She uses a special light on her body and discovers she has an alien inside like Rook predicted. Then Navarro starts having a seizure and an alien known as Chestburster bursts out of her body, killing her. Without a pilot, the Corbelin starts losing control and crashes against the station, causing a big explosion when it destroys a fuel tank. It also knocks Kay and Bjorn out. The ship keeps on floating and enters the station's hangar bay, where it breaks a window and causes a vacuum effect. Thankfully the doors close just in time, but this has destabilized the station and now it only has 47 minutes before it crashes on the planet's rings. Rain and Tyler are trying to find a way to cross the station and reach their ship, but when they're about to open a door, they find a bunch of facehuggers on the other side. Meanwhile Rook checks the computer to make sure that something called Z01 compound is still intact. Then it asks Andy for help, making him realize that the new module overwrote his directive. Instead of helping Rain, his goal is to finish the station's mission for Wayland yutani Then Andy reunites with Rain and Tyler and shares some information he got from Rook. The facehuggers can't see and find people by sensing their body temperature, this means they could raise the temperature in the room to match their bodies and become invisible. After Andy uses the thermostat to get the desired temperature, the trio starts crossing the room and has to make great effort not to react to the bodies they find in every corner. On the Corbelin, Kay wakes up and goes looking for her friends. In a corridor she finds the skin that the chestburster left behind before making the cocoon that now hangs on the wall. At that moment Bjorn finds her and makes her step back before inserting the rod into the cocoon to electrocute it until the alien's acid destroys the stick. This attack isn't enough and the creature's tail comes out to slash Bjorn's face. Acid keeps pouring out and falls on Bjorn until it kills him. As a new xenomorph starts coming out of the cocoon, Kay rushes to the door but can't open it, so she calls Tyler. He's still in the room with the facehuggers, so he has to whisper instructions for her. Kay manages to find a key and opens the door to run away before the alien can reach her. Since she's keeping her eyes on the creature, she falls off the Corbelin hatch and lands hard on the station's hangar. All the noise coming through the mics alerts the facehuggers, who begin jumping to attack. The trio immediately runs away and Tyler throws a flare on the ground so the facehuggers go after its warmth. The trick doesn't last long and soon the aliens are chasing them again, so when Andy makes it to the door, he starts closing it. Tyler and Rain have to run extra fast to cross right before the door closes. When Rain calls Andy out, he claims he did the calculations and knew they'd make it. With only 30 minutes left before crashing, the sprinklers activate in the hangar bay and Kay wakes up. She can hear the alien coming and hides before it can see her. The xenomorph walks right above her and once it's left, Kay tries reaching the hangar door only to activate the alarm. At that moment the trio appears on the other side of the door but Andy refuses to open it. He can see the xenomorph waiting, which means it's using Kay as bait. Rain tells him that Kay is pregnant to appeal to his pity, but it doesn't work. Soon the xenomorph gets tired of waiting and takes Kay away. A furious Rain slaps Andy and asks him about his directive, so he says he must choose what's best for the company. Then Andy makes Rain and Tyler get in the elevator while explaining he must finish the mission so Rook will open the hangar door and let them leave. They arrive at a lab and find a capsule full of a strange liquid. Rook appears on the computer screen and tells them that humanity was never meant to explore the universe because their bodies can't take it, so Wayland yutani created this station to study the aliens and use their fluids to enhance humans. 
This ZO1 compound is the black liquid seen in Prometheus. In a video they see a rat getting crushed almost to death but after the scientists injected it with the compound, it healed instantly. Andy grabs all the compound samples and gets ready to take them to the colony, but Rain stops him when she sees the xenomorph on the security camera. Then Andy gets two pulse rifles from a cabinet and gives them to Rain and Tyler, telling them to only shoot if it's absolutely necessary because if the alien bleeds acid, it'll cause a hull breach. The trio leaves the lab, unaware that the video is still playing. It turns out the rat mutated into the dead monster they saw inside a box. With only 20 minutes before impact, the trio begins crossing the station and finds lots of xenomorph resin, which means there's more than one around. When Andy turns on the lights in the next corridor, they're disgusted to see a full alien hive on the walls. Andy and Rain want to go back and find another corridor, but Tyler hears Kay's voice and rushes into the hive. Rain follows him and they see tons of bodies cocooned with the alien goo, including Kay's. The duo pulls her out and Andy appears to point out she hasn't been implanted yet because there's no dead facehugger at her feet. Her pulse is still very weak, so Andy offers a compound injection to help her. Before Tyler can use it, Rain stops him because she's wary of the substance and tells him Kay may survive if they take her to a cryo chamber. At that moment they hear a xenomorph screeching and approaching, so they run out of the hive into another room. There's another xenomorph there and it tries to stab Rain with its tail, but Tyler jumps in to protect her and gets stabbed instead. Then the alien uses Tyler's body to hit Andy and incapacitate him before dragging Tyler into the hive, where more creatures surround him and kill him. Rain and Kay rush into the elevator and manage to escape before the aliens reach them. However Rain can't stop thinking about her brother, so she drops Kay and the samples at the hangar bay, telling her to go back to the colony on the Corbelin. After Rain leaves, Kay worries about her baby and decides to inject herself with the compound. With only 10 minutes left before impact, Rain makes it to the hive and removes the module from Andy before resetting him. When he wakes up, he's his old self again. The xenomorphs are coming closer and the duo runs away, but Rook refuses to open the doors for them because it may put the compound at risk. While Rain furiously shoots the screen, Rook appears on the Corbelin system and asks Kay to give him access to the ship. Rain disables the station's gravity and starts shooting at the xenomorphs. Now their acid blood floats around instead of falling on the hull. With Andy holding her down, Rain shoots every creature without mercy until all of them are dead. Then the duo starts navigating the corridors while carefully avoiding the acid, however Rain almost crashes against it so she shoots her rifle to force a fall. Eventually the duo makes it to the elevator shaft and plan to go up climbing since the elevator can't work without gravity. Andy makes a jump but Rain can't move because a xenomorph grabs her leg. She immediately shoots its arm and begins floating up, unaware that the acid has created a hole in the door. Andy manages to hold onto the stairs while Rain tries to recover the rifle, which is floating away. At that moment the gravity goes through a purge and Rain falls. The elevator is also coming down, but thankfully Andy catches it. Before she can crash on the ground, a xenomorph grabs Rain with its tail. As Rain desperately grabs onto the stairs trying to escape, the lack of gravity makes all the acid in the corridor fall and damage the hull, creating a vacuum effect. This slows down the xenomorphs climbing the shaft at the same time that Andy lets go of the elevator, which goes down at great speed and crushes all the creatures. Rain is safe on the stairs and when the elevator reaches the ground, it covers the hole and stops the vacuum. Unfortunately there's a xenomorph left in the shaft and it approaches Rain together with a facehugger. At that moment Andy finds the rifle and comes down with open fire, killing both creatures in seconds. Suddenly the computer finishes the countdown and the station starts sliding on the rings. Andy and Rain finally make to the ship and find Kay unconscious. Rain immediately activates the ship's autopilot and the Corbelin manages to fly out of the station right before it fully crashes on the rings. Then Rain puts Kay in the cryopod and cuts the link to the station so Rook can't mock them anymore. He's destroyed when the station crumbles. Rain puts Andy to sleep before she starts getting a cryopod ready for herself. She notices a screen alerting her of critical vitals and opens the other pod to find Kay screaming. It turns out the compound accelerated her pregnancy and she now gives birth to a xenomorph-like cocoon. Rain immediately cuts the umbilical cord and takes it away to destroy it, but she has to drop it when she sees the acid. The cocoon opens, revealing a creepy baby inside. The acid burns through the floor and the cocoon lands in the cargo bay. When the ship detects that the cargo has been compromised, it shuts down the autopilot and changes it to manual. With a freezing ray in hand, Rain runs to the cargo bay and finds the cocoon empty, so she starts following the monstrous footprints. At the same time Andy wakes up and checks on Kay, who is producing a mucus-like substance instead of milk. Her now grown child appears and strikes down Andy before moving on top of its mother to feed, killing her. Rain shows up and tries to attack it, but the creature quickly disarms her and knocks her down. The broken freezing ray ejects frosty smoke that distracts the creature while Rain runs back to Andy, but he's too heavy to move. She sees the creature coming after her, so Rain runs away alone and locks the door behind her. The temperature is going down very quickly in this room too, thus Rain puts on a space suit to survive. As the creature starts forcing the door open, 
Rain jumps into the cargo bay and begins to disengage the manual locks, intending to eject the entire bay with the monster. She opens the first three locks very quickly but before she can do the fourth, the creature strikes her down. Rain notices the cocoon nearby and tips it over, letting the acid melt through the floor. Her suit is attached to the ship with a rope so she doesn't float away when she falls, but when she starts climbing back, the creature grabs her head and cracks her helmet. Noticing it's holding onto the bay with its tail, Rain pulls at her rope and opens the last lock, ejecting the whole bay module and sending the monster to its death when it crashes on the rings. The ship is falling too close to the rings and the sensors reactive the autopilot, so Rain gets to climb back safely before the corbelin flies away. Moments later Rain places Andy's damaged body in a cryopod, removing his module and promising to fix him before entering a pod herself, hoping they'll reach a planet alive. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.